There is something rising in our societies and we could say that we are entering into a period of the forerunners of Dajjal. Well, our major leaders in the world gathering together, some of them saying that global warming is a good thing. That the fact that the ice is melting in the north is a good thing for us. But the reality is, the opposite of what some of these leaders are saying, is that the earth is falling apart. Greenland, which is close to us, is now 45% melted. This is unprecedented. It is never known that Greenland would be melted like this which means huge glaciers are pouring into the seas. And this will have an impact upon us. This heat that is being trapped is causing confusion. In India itself, cities are running out of water. And they say that by 2020, 21 cities in India alone will have no more groundwater, no more fresh water. And with these droughts and confusions, water is also coming abnormally in other places. In the Midwest of the United States, there are uh, epic floods. The floods are hitting, raising the rivers higher than any time in recorded history. In China, they report that they have made a huge summer camp for Muslims. They call it Skills Development Training Center. But the reality is, over a million of the Uyghur Muslims, or Iyadu Bilal, are in concentration camps horrible concentration camps. In the Middle East, they are talking about the deal of the century for the Palestinian people. But when this deal is happening, the Palestinian people are not even there. They have boycotted this deal. This is a contradiction. There is something rising in our societies and we could say that we are entering into a period of the forerunners of Dajjal. Well, Iyadu Billah. Rawad al-Dajjal. And the Dajjal, the Antichrist, has been described as a trickster, a deceiver, a master deceiver, a fraud, one who makes fake news, the ultimate trickster. And we are entering into this age of the deceivers and we wonder what would the Prophet والسلام, say about this, these times that we are living in now? Because Allah opened up on him. He did not speak from himself. And it is reported that the Prophet ﷺ has told us there will come upon the people years of deceit, sanawatun khadda'at, in which the liar will be believed and the truthful person will be considered a liar. The treacherous deceiver will be trusted and the trustworthy custodian will be considered disloyal. And the ruwaybidah would speak out Ru'aybida would be representing and speaking. And they said, what is this Ru'aybida? He said, a Rajla Tafi, the most despicable, worthless person, would speak out on behalf of the masses of the people. And Sadaqa Rasulullah, this age has come. The age of deception, the age of illusions, illusion of freedom, illusion of peace, illusion of equality. And even in our Muslim lands, people marching in the streets, being gunned down, democratically elected leaders being taken down in front of the world and put into prison and killed in front of the eyes of the world. Native populations, even in our land, a land of peace, but native populations who lived right here for over 20,000 years are still living in poverty. Their women are being taken away, raped, murdered in front of the eyes of the people. Special groups of leaders making decisions behind closed doors and saying the opposite in the public. And the few good leaders, because there are a few good leaders, feel like they are surrounded. They feel like every word that they say is being monitored and they could be attacked. So this is the age of the worst of people. And as believers, we take comfort in the fact that Rasulullah spoke about this that would happen. And he told us, you will find amongst the worst of people on the day of resurrection is the two-faced person. The one who comes to one group with one face and another group with another face. Sanawatun 
khadda'at. And it is difficult for us as the common people in an age that we are living in. It is difficult because in the past and many times, in times of justice, the truth has power to it. If a person is true, it should be recognized. And that is what you could call quwwatul haqq. Two words, quwwa and haqq. The person with the truth should be recognized. But the reality is, turn the two words around. Not quwwatul haqq, haqq al quwwa. And haqq al quwwa is might makes right. So whether the person is right or wrong, if they have the strength, then they are right. This is a deception. And we as believers need to find ourselves in this time. Because it's no longer the time where we can roll over as Muslims and hide and cry and beg for our freedom. These times have ended now. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about this. We ultimately believe that the ultimate quwa is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. No authority, no power, except with Allah. Inna al quwa lillahi jamia. That verily all power ultimately is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet ﷺ said something for us. And he told us, Al mu'min al qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al mu'min al da'if wa fi kullin khayr. He said that a strong believer is better and more beloved by Allah than a weak believer. But in both of them, there is good. There is good in both. And so on our level, at least we can strive our best and teach our children to try to be as strong as possible, committed, consistent. And this strength, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the strength because when most people think about strength, they think about the fist or the knife or the gun or the bomb. But the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ شَدِيد بِسُرَى إِنَّمَا شَدِيد أَلَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ إِنْدَ الْغَدَى The Prophet ﷺ said, the strong person is not the good wrestler, but the strong person is the one who controls himself when he's angry. Self-control. So our strength needs to be the strength of our character, the strength of our spirituality, and the strength that we need. Strength of the mind to culture our knowledge, study as much as we can, study our traditions, study the sciences of this world. Ask Allah for hikmah, wisdom, because wisdom is so needed in this world that we are living in today, the time of sanawatun khadda'at. So let us try to nurture in our youth to be strong in everything they do. Strong students in school, strong at work, strong in any task that we are doing. And our unity, our unity gives us strength. If we look at Muslims, not as my cousin, or someone who looks like me or speaks my language, but any of the believers, then we are a large jama'ah. If we look at it tribalistically, then we are small little groups that will be taken away. And take time, greet other Muslims. Greet people who are different than you today. If you see a Muslim on the street, care about that Muslim. If you see a Muslim in trouble, then you're in trouble. If you see a Muslim feeling sad, then that sadness is also part of you. We need to pray for each other. This is a time for us. This is a time. It's a test. It has happened historically in the past. And we are coming to the ultimate test. We are coming to the age of the ultimate deceiver. And so we need to gear ourselves to this, to take up the task, even the small things, like being consistent in our prayers. Small things, like not letting halal, haram things come into our mouth. Small things, like making sure that we are giving to our organizations. Small things, like reaching out to people in this society, non-Muslims, showing them what Islam really is. And if we see injustice happening to somebody who is not a Muslim, then we feel that this injustice has also happened to us. We need to support our leaders, support our leaders while they are alive and not while they have passed away. It's not enough just to say, as the leader passes away, Rahimahullah. But when he was alive, when he was suffering, when he was taking the hit for our families and ourselves, 
What did we do? Even if it was just a prayer, any way of support, keep vigilant. Even while we are enjoying ourselves, we enjoy ourselves in an Islamic way. The Prophet ﷺ has told us that none of you will truly believe. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakunu hawahu taba'an lima to be. None of you will truly believe until his desires, until his enjoyment, until his playing follows what I have brought him. So even while we enjoy ourselves, keep vigilant, keep our eyes open as to what is happening, especially when we are in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to pray to Allah Azza wa Jal, especially for wisdom. Hikmah, putting things in the proper place. And if we hear something of wisdom, we need to think about it, take it in. I leave you with some of the wisdom of one of our great leaders, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a great wisdom and blessed him with the type of spirit that we need today, that when he would walk down a narrow alley, that the evil demon shayateen would go the other way. But his wisdom, and it is reported in translation that he has said, fear Allah, for he alone lives. All other things will perish. Think about this. The one we need to fear is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else, every president, every prime minister, every power will perish except Allah. And he gave us a beautiful advice for ourselves in these sanawatul khadda'at. He said, be dignified, honest, and truthful. Dignified, not arrogant, but dignified. You respect yourself and you respect other people and honest and truthful. And he said, radiallahu anh, trust is that there should be no difference between what you do and what you say and what you think. That is the true trust. There should be no difference between what you, what, what you do, say, and even what's in your head to not be a hypocrite deceiver. He also said, do not be misled by hearing of someone's reputation. Don't be misled if you hear the reputation of a person. He also said, radiallahu anh, do not depend upon the morality of a person until you have seen him behave while he's angry. Don't believe in the morality. But if he's angry, see how he acts. Then you know who that person really is. Remember what the strong person is that the Prophet ﷺ said, alladhi yamliku nafsahu and al The one who controls himself when he's angry. That's the strong person. That's the one that we need to follow and we need to respect. And so we take this time as we go into this rest period to remind ourselves not to rest. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hayyun la yamut. Allah is alive and will never die. Keep vigilant, keep making dua, keep trying to do something for the righteousness of this world. And keep praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have mercy upon the weak and the innocent in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect the dignity and the honor of the women and the families of this Ummah. Keep praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect and strengthen the men of this Ummah and raise up balanced leadership into our world. And keep praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take yourself and all of us out of this world with kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you.